hello YouTube and as you can probably see from the title of the video that uh, this Saturday was not uh, that 25 top 25 smash characters that I promised you but instead is a pack review of uh, the X and Y booster set Phantom Forces in the Pokemon TCG um, I've been planning on doing these for a while like pack reviews of different sets of Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh whatever um, I just never really got around to it I suppose I've got the time to now so here we go. Um, basically what I've done is I've got three windows open. First of all I'm going to go through the trash cards in the set because every set has trash cards. Uh, then I'll go through the good Pokemon and then the good rest of the cards. And basically uh, I'm going to give you my personal opinion on whether or not I think that the set is worth it money wise. If I think there's enough good cards in it that you can build decks out of it etc etc. Um, so this is specifically for Phantom Forces, but this will be like the format that I will use for every one of these. So uh, let's get into it then. Let's start with the really, really bad cards that this set has to offer. Like this amazing, uh, amazing Furfrow right here. There are a lot of, uh, quite a few basic Pokemon in this that are just, they, they, you know, the ones that don't evolve and they really don't do anything. Like 50 for free energy is really not worth it. We've got Alamomola, which is 80, but it's for 4 energies. This first is heal 30 and switch it, but why? Would you bother? Why do you want to put this on your bench? You'd rather it die. That's kind of, you know, 100 health. It's a decent amount of health, but it's really not worth it. Uh, Skarmory, another 100 health. Uh, at least it's a steel type, so you could use it in a steel type deck. But 90 damage for 3 energies and then discard one? Eh, it's really not worth it. I mean, 90 for 3 is good, but it's alright. It's not good. Um, we have Giraffe Freak. <laughs> My god, is this bad. 2 for 20, or 3 for 50, and if you have a Psychic, it does 80. So if you do have a Psychic, 80 for 3 is not terrible, but why wouldn't you just use Miltank? <laughs> um, then we have Dedene, which, eh, it's lackluster at best. You flip a coin, if heads put out, like, flip a coin, things are terrible. If you want to make, wanting to build a consistent TCG deck, don't use coin flip effects. There are very few coin flip effects I'd say that are actually even remotely worth trying. Dedene is not one. Uh, Deancy, oh look, if the training Pokemon tries to attack, flip a coin. That attack is useless. You can heal 30 to meet your fairy Pokemon, which is alright, but it's free energies and he only has 90 health and I don't know, it just doesn't seem worth it to me. Uh, Regigigas, nice big beefy health bar. But uh, 80 for free and 100 for 4. Mm. I mean, reducing damage by 40 for doing 80 is not terrible, but you need free energies for it, so it's kind of like, if you're going to build up free energies on a Pokemon, you'd rather it be like your boss Pokemon, and not some trash like Regigigas here. Uh, right, now let's see the evolved stuff that's trash, because I haven't got all of the basics that do evolve, obviously, because that would be a waste of time. Uh, Blissey is just awful. Free energies for 10. And then flip a coin, if heads, it does 10 damage times the number of damage counters on each of your bench Pokemon. Now that has the possibility to do a lot of damage. But if you get tails, it's free energies for 10. That is never worth it. I mean, I guess you could use the new, there's a new trainer that allows you to redo your coin flip. If you really wanted to try it, it could be quite funny. But, I don't know. And then charge dash for 4 energies, does 60. But you can also make it do 80 if you do 20 to yourself. 80 for 4 energies is barely worth it anyway. It's not worth it. Let <laughs> um, me have this trash Fero here. 40 for 2. Flip a coin. If tails, this attack does nothing. But if heads, prevent all effects of the uh, of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon next turn. So you can either do 40 damage and skip uh, pretty much your opponent attacking this card next turn. Or you do nothing. And waste your turn. Or 3 for 60. Mm, no. No thanks. Remembering you have to actually evolve to get all these things. Like This is a stage 3 here. Oh, sorry, a stage 2. I always call them stage 3. It's my bad. Uh, a stage 2. So that means you have to either have a rare candy and this in your hand when you have a Fletchling or actually evolve up to Fletchling the first. So 1 energy for 30. It's not terrible, but it is a stage 3. And then flip two coins does 30 more damage to each heads. Yeah, I mean, that's only a plus, but 90 for 1 at 1 energy is insane if you pull it off. But coin flips again, and you can't use the coin flip card on this because you're only allowed to use it on things that only has one coin flip. So, and this other one is free for 120. I mean, you could get the free on there easy enough because it's a fire type, but then you take an extra 20 damage next turn. Why? <laughs> That's you shouldn't minus yourself for that. 
Uh, this Heliolisk is utter trash. One for 30 is alright, and then two for 30 times, and it does 30 times the number of energies you discard. Why would you want to discard all your energies? You haven't got anywhere to put them back on. Not right now. Electrics, mm, not great right now. I mean, they've got a few good things, but not enough, really. Uh, Diggersby, utter trash. For a double colorless, does 30. Flip a coin, you can detach an energy. Sure, if you get the hits. But it's a flip a coin, so. I mean, again, you could use the new coin flip trainer, but I don't, mm, I don't really care for it. And then Earthquake is 80 for free, which is not the worst, but it's, again, it's not really great. And it does 10 to each of a bunch of Pokemon. Never mind. Uh, this first attack, not terrible. Shuffle three cards from your discard pile into your deck. That could help. That could really help you getting certain cards back into your deck. But you do have to evolve to get to this, and it only has 90 health. And then it's actual attack that does damage. It's 2 energies for 30, and both Pokemon are now asleep. What about if you don't wake up because of the coin flips? And then they do wake up. It, it's just too, too luck based for that second attack. And the first attack's not worth it to evolve up to it just to do that. You know, you just use like Power Pad to put your supporters back in instead. It's the rest of your stuff. You know, if you need your Pokemon, revive. If you need your energies, energy retrieval. There you go. Sorted. Uh, my channel, not great. 2 for 30. Flip a coin if it has discard and energy. Yay. Again, great if you get the heads. Terrible otherwise. And then 3 for 80. Again, still rather trash. At least it doesn't hurt yourself. Uh, Honchkrow, uh, for 1, does 20 and puts your opponent to sleep, which is actually not terrible, but sleep isn't really a very reliable condition. And its third attack is 60 for free, but it does an extra 60 if they stay asleep. That means they have to get two tails in a row and not be able to retreat it with a trainer. Yeah, not very likely. Um, Kingler, uh, it's not the worst card, but I mean, in, in a water like a Blast Lee's deck, you could get the four energies for 100 pretty quick, but it seems kind of pointless. And then uh, 20 for 1, during your opponent's next turn, any damage reduced by 20. It's not terrible if you're sitting there waiting to get the water energies. Uh, Lipard, 1 for 10, and then any damage is reduced by 60, which is actually pretty nice. But it only has 90 health to begin with, so EXs can sweep this thing out and not even look twice at it. And 2 energies for 40 and isn't affected by resistance is also pretty cool. Not Oh yeah, I was about to say I can't think of anything that resists dark. Yep, uh, Fairy does, so... But mm, 2 for 40, I mean, that's your strongest attack. It's not really going to do much damage. Uh, Garvantula's first attack, being able to switch, uh, choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and then switch out and then confuse the new active one is actually really cool. I like that attack. But um, the Joltik itself is more useful. <laughs> uh, second attack for free at a 60 and they can't retreat next turn. You know, basically his concept is just keep change their Pokemon and then keep whatever you want in. So you can slowly chip away at it, which is not a terrible concept, but I don't know. I don't really. So I wouldn't say it's one of the worst cards. It's just not. It's not worth it really. Scavalier, one energy for twenty, and discard a random card in opponent's hand. Pretty decent attack. Not very strong. Not gonna, you know, kill them anytime soon. But if they're setting up and they haven't set up yet, it's a good way to screw with them. But of course, the stuff like N discarding stuff in their hand doesn't really matter because stuff gets shuffled back in anyway, and people can use the graveyards nowadays. Uh, discard pile nowadays in Pokemon anyway, so. Uh, three energies for 60, and then flip a coin to get tails, does 30 more for each heads. Great in concept, terrible in actuality. Swalot, two energies for 30 and poison them. Game Guard does it better, it does three energies for 60 and poisons them and swaps you to the bench. So, it's kind of pointless. And then three energies for 50 plus. Uh, this attack isn't actually terrible. If uh, you have m more health than the defending Pokemon, it does 100. 100 for free isn't bad. But you have to have more health left than them. Considering you only start on 110, that's not very likely. Uh, of course, there are some trash trainers as well, like Handscope. Your opponent reveals his or her hand. Cool. Don't really care what's in the hand. Probably just going to get end back anyway. I probably already know what they're playing. Uh, Tiano is the kind of trash card you expect in like every set, so I wouldn't say this is like a, a downgrade in the set at all. You just, you know, it's, it's the kind of card that... If you haven't got the money for good cards, you just kind of throw them in your deck. Eh, why not? Draw three, whatever. Uh, Zero Sick is a new supporter in the set, and I don't understand why they made it. You choose either a tool or a special energy attached to Pokemon and discard it. Now, if you want to get rid of a tool, you just use uh, Tool Scrapper or Megaphone because they do it better. Tool Scrapper gets rid of two, Megaphone gets rid of all of your opponents. Um, if you want to get rid of an energy, there's the hammers. The thing is that. Both of them are items, not supporters, so don't waste your support for the turn. Why would... I don't understand why you'd use your supporter for it. It just seems really utterly pointless to me. 
The other trash new supporter is AZ. Uh, apart from the fact that its wording is terrible, because it just says put a Pokemon in your hand, it doesn't say where from. So I could just, what, go into my folder and add a Gengar to my hand, yeah? Alright, cool. But um, what it actually does is basically what uh, Compulse does in Yu-Gi-Oh, just bounce it back to your hand and discard everything attached to it. I'm fairly certain that's just Scoop Up. But, you know, Scoop Up isn't a supporter, it's an item, and it's illegal. What? <laughs> Why would you... I don't... I don't... I don't know. And then there's Jellison. In my opinion, of the worst card in the set. His first attack puts free energies from your opponent's discard pile onto any of their Pokemon. Yep, you equip energies to their Pokemon. Just so that your second attack, which you'd have to wait a turn for, bearing in mind it's only has 100 health, does 10 more damage to each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Which means the only way you can actually use meddling to help you is by equipping it to their active Pokemon, which means they can then use their attack on you and kill you. And it only does an extra 10. So if you equip free energies, and that's all the energies they have on them, it'll do 80 for free. What? That's, yeah, I don't understand why this is a card. Like, the artwork is cool that they have both the male and female one, but this is like the worst TCG card I've ever seen. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, it is indeed a thing. But not every card in the set is trash. We have some really good cards. So, uh, you can't see actually up top, I have a lot of tabs open here for the cards I think, uh, first of all, like the ones I think have potential, and then the ones I think are actually really good. So starting with the potential cards, uh, there's Venomoth, one energy. Now, you probably see that flip a coin effect there. This is one of those times where I think a flip a coin effect might actually be worth it. So if your opponent plays any trainer, that's an item, that's a supporter, that's a tool, that's a stadium, doesn't matter, anything, uh, they, they flip a coin. If tails, the card has no effect. So, you could obviously use your coin flip to retry and reflip that coin if it fails. So, you've got two chances to get Tails to negate any trainer. That's really good um, for a whole turn. And then, if you're not using that, say they're not using trainers, free energies, 50, it doesn't seem much, but the opponent's active Pokemon is confused and poisoned. If they're confused, they have to flip a coin to try and retreat. So, they're less likely to retreat, and the poison's also going to hurt them. I think this card has a lot of potential. I, don't, I wouldn't know if it was a top tier worthy card because both of them are attacks and neither of them are abilities but I really like this Venomoth I think it's I think it's pretty solid um x I'm kind of on the fit so like 4 energies for 90 is alright but it's not great but um it's first attack for 1 double colorless energy uh this attack does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon so if they have 5 Pokemon on their bench maybe like the ones they're setting up like weak Pokemon say they're running a Night Marsh deck and they've got like uh Joltix on the bench with 30 and stuff you can just hit everything for 20 all at the same time. That has that is some real potential. That card. Um, I'm. I'd say this. I don't like because it's a stage two. You have to rare candy it or go through loud red. It might not be quite as good, but I think I think it's got potential. I think someone can make a decent deck with it. Um, Gigalith is another one I think has a lot of potential. Um, basically, his ability reduces all damage by fifty as long as he has full health. So if you keep healing this guy up and keep him on full health, possibilities are endless, right? Because um, he's a rock Pokemon, he's got all the new fighting support from uh, Furious Fists, like Karina, the new strong energy, so you can do more damage, the stadium, so you can do more damage. Uh, Karina allows you to search out items, so you can search out potions for it. As long as you have a way to equip energies to it, I think this is pretty solid. Because the 4 energies for 60, and then next turn it does for, uh, an extra 40. So basically, after the first time you use it, it'll do 100 every turn, which is uh, it's pretty solid. You know, 4 for 100's alright. Uh, especially when you consider strong energy adds 20, uh, muscle band adds 20, the stadium adds 20, uh, or does it add 30? I forget. But basically, this could do a lot of damage if you wanted it to. And if it's got full health, you're pretty much going to resist any strong attack coming at you. So they have to hit you really hard, like full on EX hard, and it won't kill you probably because of your ability. And then if you can heal up again, see where I'm going with this? I think this card has a lot of potential. Again, it's a stage two, so you're going to have to rare candy, but this is the kind of card you'd theme a deck around. So, um, Pachirisu, I think, is quite quite a cool little tech card in an electric deck. Uh, basically, for one, any energy does 10 damage, and the defending Pokemon's weakness is electric until the end of the turn. So, basically, uh, Pachirisu obviously won't be able to do too much. You could do the flip a coin and try for 50, try for 100. But if you have like a Mana Trick EX, or a Mega Mana Trick EX even on your bench, um, you could Trick Sticker. 
and the next turn, swap out, like this will probably die anyway, swap out the Mega Manetric for its 110, but it'll actually do 220, and oh, that, could, that could kill anything pretty much. So um, I like I like the concept of this. I don't know if it's good like as it is. Maybe if it was an ability, it'd be better. But you know, it's pretty solid as it is. That's pretty cool little tech. Fradigator. I really didn't like this when I first saw it because it reminded me too much of the Gold and Silver Fradigator, which was terrible. <laughs> but for 3 60, flip a coin until you get tails of each has discard and energy. That's just an extra added effect. You got to remember this is a water Pokemon, so you're going to be running this in the Blastoise deck, which you've already got rare candies anyway. So as long as you have stuff to recycle the rare candies, which I would recommend, this might not be a terrible, uh, terrible deck to feed me Blastoise deck around. To be honest, I mean there are better, there are better cards, obviously like Keldeo and stuff, which is why stuff like this gets overlooked. But I still think this has some potential because if you can keep discarding their energies, why not? I mean obviously it's coin flips, but it's just extra. And then for four, you do eighty. But if they have any damage counters on them, it does 160 instead. 160 is a lot for four. And four energies in a water deck, is you can do that in one turn, no problem. So, mm, I think this does have some potential. Like, Keldeo can get up some decent damage. It's 110 for three energies. Um, and it's 130 for four. This is 160 for four. And as for getting the damage, you could poison them, or you could run stuff like uh, Goldbat and Crobat to chip away at the bench, or even better, uh, Greninja X uses ability. Water Shuriken, or is it regular Greninja? I forget. One of those two. Uh, just Water Shuriken, discard a water, hit for 30. Your water energy is going to hit the grave all the time anyway, because you've got all your energy retrieval, super energy retrievals. I reckon you can make a decent deck of Blastoise, Frelegator, and Greninja. Have an awesome water starter deck. That would be so cool. If I had the cards, I might try out. I might try out on Lackeys, actually. It might be a pretty decent deck idea to try out. But I think this card has a lot of potential after really thinking over it. Uh, next up is Gliscor. Uh, on its own, pretty bad card, to be honest. 90 health. doesn't do much damage. But you got to remember, with the fighting Pokemon, that new fighting support, like the Strong Energy, the Field Spell, Karina, in uh, uh, Furious Fists, really helps these guys out. So for one energy, 20, and your opponent can't equip an energy from their hand to their defending Pokemon next turn. So, with a strong energy, that'll do 40. With muscle band, that'll do 60. With a field spell against an EX, that'll do 80 damage for one energy, and they can't equip an energy next turn. They're, it's basically dead. So, and then for three energy, 60, and flip a coin if heads is poisoned. Now, it is a coin flip, so you, obviously you could use the coin flip card, as I keep mentioning, but the possibility of getting poison in a fighting deck, I don't know, I just, I really like that idea. Like, it's not something that you can normally do and I think that's pretty cool to be honest so um, and obviously with all the strong energies and the field spells and stuff that'll do a lot more than 60 so yeah I think Gliscor has some uh, you know potential it's only a stage 1 so it's pretty easy to get out uh, Spiritomb next B cancel is a, not only a really funny name for an attack because it's like you know you press B to cancel evolution but not letting your Pokemon opponent evolve next turn that's pretty awesome. Let's be real. I mean, it's not the best thing ever, but if you're going against a heavy evolution deck, that could really screw your opponent over. Swap out like their Fennekin or something in a fire deck, or their Squirtle in a water deck, hit them with B Council. What can they do? They're stuck there. And then Confuse Ray for 30. Yeah, it's not a good attack, to be honest. It's just there. It's, you know, whatever. Um, Leaveny is one that should have really good potential. But because it's stage 2, I think it's kind of lacking. Uh, for 1 energy, choose up to 2 of your bench Pokemon that have no Pokemon tools, and then search your deck for a tool and attach it to them. That's really cool. I don't know anything else that can do that. So, um, but what, it's a grass deck. Grass decks aren't exactly known for needing tools ever. Like, I guess you could equip some Muscle Bands or whatever to some Virizions maybe, but it's, I don't know. Like, the concept of the card's really cool. But, and then for free energy, 17, heal 20 from all grass Pokemon, which includes yourself. Um, so that's nice, but it's nothing special. Um, Luminion's pretty cool. For one, any energy, search it for after two Pokemon and put them in your hand. Any Pokemon you want. That's like a double Master Ball right there. That's cool. If you want a Pokemon to set up to search your deck for certain specific Pokemon, this is the one to do it. Yes, it's a stage one, so you have to run Finian as well, which kind of sucks. And if you do want to use Zever Attack, you need a Water Energy. But 30 for 2 and now they're asleep isn't terrible either. But the main thing about this card is you can just search your deck for any two Pokemon you want. Put them in your hand. So a lot of people can have Call for Family, which I really like, allowing you to put two bases on your bench. If you're wanting an evolution deck, you can't search for them. Or you want to search for your Megas or whatever. 
There you go, neon sign. Does it for you. Uh, Gudra has a really funky ability that no players can attach Pokemon tools. Now this isn't good against everyone, but I find it ironic that it's an ability that stops the Garbodor deck. Because obviously the Garbodor deck, the whole point is it stops abilities, but this ability stops the Garbodor's ability because you need a tool for Garbodor's ability. I don't know, I think I really like the apart from the fact that I really like Gudra anyway, but I just I just like the concept of being able to stop Garbodor with an ability. It's, I don't know, it sounds kind of cool. Four for 130, discard top card of your deck isn't terrible either, but obviously you need one water, one fairy, and a double colorless, which kind of sucks. But dragons kind of suck anyway, to be honest. Uh, Yammega, a solid card for grass deck. One energy, shuffle your hands to your deck, draw six. I mean, if you're running out of cards, seems pretty solid. 110 health, alright, for free energies, 50 plus. If this was on the bench and became active this turn, it does 100. That's pretty cool. You could just swap them out all the time with stuff like escape rope and whatever. And then just, it's got free retreat cards, so you can literally retreat it and then escape rope it back out. Every turn for 100 damage for free energy is just pretty sweet. And if you kept it out for a turn, you can just use windfall and get a new hand. So it's pretty solid choice for a grass deck. Um, Chandelure. Chandelure. This card, on its own, is really good. If it's knocked out, you get a chance to flip a coin, and if heads, the attack Pokemon is knocked out. Obviously, you can use the coin flip on that as well, so you have two chances to get heads to insta-KO anything that KOs it. It's attack, free energies, put six damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like, so you can just chip off things on the bench, chip off the active, split them up as much as you like. I love that attack. That's actually really solid. Problem with Chandler, is this a stage two, so obviously rare candy you could do. But Lampen is a really good card. But in the deck you run Lampen in, you don't want to run Litwick or Chandelure in. And it just makes this card really awkward. Like, you could have um, all three of the family, and you just want to run Lampen in a different deck to both Litwick and Chandelure. And it's like... Uh... See what I mean? I don't know. It just seems really weird to me. As a card, though, it's a pretty damn solid choice, to be honest. Um, Malamari X. For any X... Not really that great. 170 health. It's pretty solid. Uh, its ability, really good. When you attach an energy from your hand as Pokemon, uh, you may use this ability. Your opponent's attached Pokemon is now asleep. So basically, every turn you can just go, equip an energy from my hand to this Pokemon, opponent's Pokemon is now asleep. Obviously, sleep isn't the best of ability, best of um, special conditions, but still a pretty solid choice. Uh, if you're running energy switch, you can just equip it to Malamar, switch it off onto something else. That's pretty cool. And it's attack for two energies. Flip a coin for each energy attached to the Pokemon. It does 60 times the number of heads. You have a possibility to do a lot of damage there if you keep equipping energies. Um, I know I don't like coin flip attacks, which is why I'm kind of iffy about the card. And obviously its ability only puts them to sleep, which sleep isn't great. But if you did end up using that Honchcrow from earlier, whose attack required them to be asleep, equip an energy to Malamar, instantly asleep, energy switch, put it on the Honchcrow, Honchcrow attack for 120. It's a possibility. Um, I mean, if someone wants to try that as a deck... Malamar Hunch Crow deck. That'd be pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, there's another card that is right after this Malamar, Hydregion, which you could also use in the deck. Um, this ability is basically Dark Pulse. Not Dark Pulse? That's an attack, sorry. Um, dark Patch is what I meant. Uh, dark Patch I don't think is legal anymore, but it's an item that basically when you, you get a Dark Energy from your discard pile and put it on one of your bench Pokemon. This ability, every turn, lets you equip a Dark Energy to your active Pokemon. Now, this won't trigger uh, Malamar because it requires you to attach from your hand. But if you've got Malamar on the bench and Honchcrow's your active, you can use this to just make sure Honchcrow's always got enough energies to attack. Because it only needed like two or three energies to do its attack anyway. If you're energy switching off this, you know, equipping with this, if you've got more than one of them out, you can use it more than once. It's, I think it's a pretty... I mean, you'd have to run the Hydreigon, which is the main problem. Obviously, you need a rare candy and whatever. But... I think it's a pretty solid choice, to be honest. I mean, for a dark Pokemon, this is really good. Uh, crazy Headbutt, not great. But uh, you could. 130, hit, detach one of your energies, discard the dark one. Then if it lives next turn, you can just equip it right back with Dark Impulse, if he's the active Pokemon. So the discarding energy is not too much of a problem. 130 for fours, all right. It's just the fact you have to use a Psychic as well, obviously. But um, no, I think that Hydreigon... Uh, Malamar could have some possible potential. Honchkrow could have potential with these two, but on its own is just trash. Um, right, now we're into the cards I think have like massive potential. These cards are solid. Uh, Golbat and Crobat, and obviously therefore the Zubat as well. Now, in this set, 
there is a uh, stadium that makes all psychic Pokemon's attacks require one less colorless energy. As I'm sure you noticed on both of these, their attacks only require one colorless energy. This means you never need to equip them with an energy. They also have no retreat cost. So, yeah, you, you can retreat them for free. You never need to equip an energy to any Zubat, Golbat, or Crobat. Uh, when you evolve Zubat to the Golbat, you put two damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon, and then we evolve uh, Crobat to Golbat to Crobat, you put three damage counters on them. So that's basically 50 chip damage just for free. You get to hit anything you want, hit the bench, hit their active. Uh, Crobat especially, against Night March deck, you just hit 30 on the Joltic. Whoops, I get a prize card for evolving a Pokemon. Uh, as for their attacks, his attack, which obviously, remember, if you've got the filter bell, requires no energies, uh, does 10 damage to every one of your opponent's Pokemon, so you're going to hit all of their bench again. So if you've just put 2 on something that has 30, and then attack with it, that's an Abigail, and you get to do 10 damage to everything else. Uh, Golbat just does 30 to anything, it's basically the same as his ability. But you get all of these things just for free. Like, it's a stage free that I would even say don't bother running rare candy and just actually evolve Zubat, Golbat, Crobat, run four of each. Um, it actually works really damn well. Like, it shouldn't, but it does. It just really, really solid cards, these. Um, Pyro is another one that I think is insanely useful. Uh, not for his attack. His attack, you know, 4 for 110, does 30 itself, whatever. But, um,. Once a turn, before you attack, you discard a fire attached to this, and then switch on your opponent's bench Pokemon. Basically, you get a Lysander every turn. So you just get to choose one of the bench Pokemon, bring it out, and kill it. Have this sitting on your bench, and in fire decks, it's not hard to equip fire energies, thanks to all like the tools and supporters and whatever that they have. I don't quite know how fire decks work, but I've seen them play, and they just get energies for days. So just have a bunch on Pyro, and then start building up everything else, and you can just choose whenever the hell you want to switch something out. Uh, the only problem... Obviously, is if they swap out Pyro, he's got a two retreat cost, so you're probably going to want to have to like run some escape ropes to make sure you can get Pyro back to your bench if they don't kill it. And if they do kill it, it's not the end of the world. They only get one prize, so I think it's a pretty solid choice. Um, his next four Pog no five Pokemon are all uh, Steel types. Uh, basically, Klefki here uh, is uh, like the Kangaskhan from... I don't remember what set the Kangish comes from, but it had Cool Family for one energy, search deck two base Pokemon, put on your bench. This requires a Steel energy rather than any energy, and has less health, but because it's a Steel type, if you're running it in something like a Kling Clang deck, uh, the Plasma Kling Clang, that means all Steel types are unaffected by EX Pokemon. Yeah, includes a Klefki now. So uh, Klefki being able to bring out any basics is pretty solid, especially as Steels actually have some decent basics now. Uh, we have Heatran here, who's a pretty decent beater. Three energies for 40, or 80 if there's a stadium in play. Might I add, Steel types have their own stadium now, so you're probably going to have a stadium in play. And it says if that's any, so even if your opponent's like, I'll get rid of your stadium, okay, you still have a stadium in play now. There's almost always going to be a stadium in play, so that's basically always going to do 80 for free. And then four for 130, discard an energy. Seems like a bad idea. Actual fact, putting Steel energies in the graveyard? Totally fine. So... Heatran, massive, massive beta. Really solid. Uh, we also have Dialga EX. So for free NGs, it can do 60. And if the defending Pokemon is an EX, it can't attack. <clears throat> okay. That seems uh, pretty damn good. And then for four energies, 150. You'd have to discard two still energies, which kind of sucks, but 150 damage is massive. Like, personally, I think Heatran is better than Dialga. Because they're both four energies. This does 20 less, but you only discard one energy rather than two. And it doesn't say what type of energy. So if you need to, you can discard something else. Uh, so, I mean, yes, it has less health, but at the same time, it has 50 he less health, and the opponent doesn't get two prizes. Okay? And his other attack is free for 80, whereas yours is free for 60, but I suppose it's got the extra effect. So they're both solid cards, but especially as a lot of decks can protect against EX now, like, well, Plasma Kling Clang and the uh, Sigilyph, I just think Heatran's better. I think Heatran's a really solid card. Um, we also have... Aegislash. Now this card, personally, I think is insane. Sorry, Aegislash EX, I should say. It's attack, free energies, 40 plus, does 20 more for each steel energy attached to this Pokemon. Basically, kill the OEX's attack, but 10 less. That's fine. If you if you have free steel energies on this, that's 100 damage for free energies. Okay. Um, and its ability prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by any Pokemon that has a special energy attached to it. Fire have... No, not fire, sorry. Psychic have their own special energy. Uh, Steel is getting their own special energy. 
Double Colorless Energy is special. Psychic has their own special energy. Fighting has their own special energy. Rainbow Energy is a thing. Blend Energies are a thing. There are so many special energies in the game right now. This thing can literally wall everything while just beating them down with Slash Blast. Like, three energies for 100, okay? Or you could equip more and do more damage. You know, it's never-ending increased attack. Sure, it doesn't. it's not as powerful as some of the other ones, but the fact that it can pretty much defend itself from any Pokemon, they really have to focus on setting up a Pokemon that doesn't have special energies, which you could then just troll them and take it out of each one. Um, the, what really has made the Steel deck so solid, I mean, apart from the fact that you can just shove these two cards on the bench just with a Klefki, which is insane, but uh, what I think has made the deck really solid is this guy. A Stage 1 Pokemon, 90 health, its ability, once per turn before you attack, you can attach a Steel Energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Uh, if any of you were playing back when E-Electric was a thing, the Dynamo to E-Electric, which is a deck, was my first proper deck that I built, actually. I had a, a Lugia EX deck with it in. But um, that card was insane. You just, every turn, you get extra energies. You obviously get evolved to multiple Bronzongs and just keep Steel Energy, Steel Energy, Steel Energy, Steel Energy from your graveyard, as long as you get them all in the graveyard for it. And you can just build up all your Pokemon on your bench and then swap them out however you're swapping them out. You'd probably end up running float stones in this and escape ropes just so you can make sure you can always swap. But um I think it's really, really good. Really good. Like you can equip you can set up your Aegis Slash, set up your Heatran, whatever's on the bench, you can set it up straight away where you're just sitting out. I mean these things are massive walls as well, you gotta realise. 170, 130. I mean 70 is not great, but whatever, that's just gonna set up your bench. You can bring out your bronzors and your you know, heat trans and Asia slashes, and then next turn you can evolve your bronzors. You can use Evo Soda to bring Bronzong out the deck, so you don't even need to have to have it in your hand. Personally, I think Steel Deck's one of the best new decks to come out of this set. And I think I really hope that it does well, to be honest. Um, other good cards we've got in this set though include this lovely little Wobbuffet here that seems to have just been overlooked by everyone. I'm not quite sure why. Basically its ability it says if this is your active Pokemon then all Pokemon in both players' hands, uh, fields, and discard pile have no effect unless they're Psychic type. So if you're running the uh, Garbodor deck, and your opponents say they've got the Gudra out that I was talking about earlier, and it's negating your ability, you're like, ah, it's really annoying. It's not it because you can't, you know, equip at all. Bob Effect can then just swap out to the active, negate all abilities, negate the opponent's Gudra, and then you can equip at all or Garbodor, and then his ability is active anyway. I think Wobbuffet in that deck is really helpful. Like, you can set up all your other plays by just having Wobbuffet as a backup. Um, and obviously, if you just have Wobbuffet, you can use stuff like Mr. Mime to protect your bench and whatever, because you can still use all Psychic Pokemon's abilities. You don't have to worry about only being able to use Garbodor's ability, which is also kind of cool. This attack's also pretty solid for two energies. It does 10 damage, plus 10 for each damage counter in your opponent's active Pokemon. So if they've got Pokemon that's already taken half health, you can one-shot it. It's not the best ever, but it's you know it's a pretty solid attack, considering its ability is already amazing anyway. Uh, I think this works really well if you're running it in a deck with the Gengar EXs and the Crobats. I think those three as a deck together work really well, because your Crobats' effects won't be negated by Wobbuffet anyway. So, and neither will you make it Gengar. I don't know, I'm just saying, I think that's a pretty solid deck. Um, these next three, I'm sure everyone knows what these are by now. Lampant, Joltik, and Pumpkaboo. The Night March deck. I'm sure everyone's heard of Night March by now. Lampant, the Night March Pokemon you never actually attack with. And then Joltik and Pumpkaboo, the ones you either want on your bench or the ones you want out for attacking. Uh, basically, Night March does 20 damage for each other Night March Pokemon with the attack in the grave. So you want to send as many Lampants to the grave as you can, and then send a couple of Joltics and Pumpkaboos. And then, like, if there are six Pokemon in the grave, uh, so I keep calling it the graveyard, you have to excuse me for that, I mean discard pile. Um, then it'll do 120 for three energies on this, or two energies on this. Of course, if you have the Psychic Field spell, it would just be two energies on this as well. And... Wow, really? And you don't have to run psychic energies or electric energies to run either of these because they just require colorless. So you can just double colorless for days. Of course, then you can't hit Age Slash EX. But, you know. Um, and personally, what I like to do with this deck is run it with Celebi EX, whose ability allows uh, Pokemon to use their previous stages' attacks. So I can evolve Pumpkaboo to Galgeist, equip it with a grass energy so its ability is active, because this won't even be negated by Wobbuffet. 
So it has 200 health, which is about, you know, a little bit lower than a mega. And even if they do knock it out, they only get one prize. And because you can use your previous stage's attack, you can just sit there with the filter bar. Pump Guru's Night March, one double colorless energy. Boom. <laughs> like, its attack's pretty solid on its own. Does 10 damage times the number of cards in your hand. If you can just keep drawing a bunch, you know, it's all right. It's not the best, but it's okay. But um, its ability, being able to have 200 health and still being able to hit for massive damage, like 200 damage or whatever with Night March, is insane. Those, like, together with Celebi EX, and obviously because Celebi's grass, you'll be running a grass deck with psychic and electric Pokemon in <laughs> but it it just works like that's how I've built my my March deck because it's the deck I'm playing in real life at the moment and it it's a solid deck I mean it's not the most competitive deck in the world because you do have to have the right cards to set up at the beginning you basically want to get battle compressors in your first hand but it's you know you can really turbo the deck fast and I think it's a pretty solid deck pretty fun as well um fairies got some really good support in this set as well uh, this slurp off here, uh, its ability just lets you draw a card, an extra card every turn. And if it's your active Pokemon, you get to draw two extra cards every turn. That's kind of really good. Yu-Gi-Oh would kill to have a card like this. <laughs> like you can just sit a couple of these on the bench and just draw a couple of extra cards whenever you need them. Okay. I mean, the other slurp off is really good as well. Uh, the one from the X and Y base set that stops all Pokemon Fairy Energies being uh, hit by special abilities, but. Uh, what I think might work is a fairy grass deck where you use Verizion's effect. So everything with a grass energy is unaffected by special abilities. So you can run this Lurpluff instead. And then you can run Florgis EX over here, which is very nice. Um, its second attack does 20 damage times the number of grass and fairy Pokemon you have in play. So, I mean, you could just run this in a pure fairy deck and it would be fine. You know, have five on the bench, one out, 120 damage with two energies. Okay. But if you do run it with grass, it still kind of works. Also, his first attack is insanely good. Just one fairy and you search deck for any support and put in your hand. How many times is it that people have the problem? It's just, oh, I haven't got a support right now. Problem solved. Fairy decks are never going to have that problem. And with the amount of good cards that win the X and Y base set for fairies, yeah, I think fairies is going to be a pretty competitive deck now, not just needing Mewtwo and all that bullcrap that they did before. Um, so, yeah. Slurpluff, Forges EX. Uh, as for the last Pokemon in the set, uh, Mana Tricky X is pretty solid. One energy does 20 damage to one of your, uh, your opponent's active and the opponent's, one of the opponent's bench. Pretty cool. That's any energy. And then for two energies, if they have a Pokemon tool, it does 120 damage. Again, pretty solid attack. But uh, mainly I like it for the Mega Manetric. Uh, for two energies, 110 damage, and equip two basic energies from your discard pile to any of your bench Pokemon. That's insane. Like, especially if you mix with the Pachiri I was talking about earlier, so that would do 220, which is off the chain for two energies. Um, but even so, just 110 damage, that can knock out a lot of, you know, non-EX Pokemon in one shot. And you get to equip two energies to one of your bench Pokemon? What's not to love about this card? Seriously, this is like the best thing that Electric have had since Dynamotor Electric. Dynamotor Electric was still legal. I would be playing a pure Electric deck right now, no questions asked. Dynamotor Manetric EX, done. Uh, I, I really like, this is probably one of my favourite cards in the set, this Mega Manetric EX. Uh, much better than the one in the video game. I mean, the video game Mega Manetric's alright, but <laughs> this one's way better. And um, then for the cover card of the set, Mr. Gengar EX with his jelly bean background. For one energy, the three damage counts on any Pokemon, and you punch Pokemon any way you like. Just one, or, but you pick one and then put three damage counts on it. Uh, if you remember the field spell, that attack is free. You can just do that whenever. It's basically like the Crobat. You can just hit. Do free, chip anything, which is why I think that they work really well together, because you can make a deck which just chips away at your opponent's bench and knocks them out. It's other attack, one psychic and two colorless, or just two energies, if you're uh, you know running the field spell. Uh, 60 damage, poison the opponent Pokemon, and swap to the bench. All in one. Wow. Um, and then Mega Gengar X, which remember Megas can still use the attack of the ones underneath them. For free energies, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon attacks, and use it as this attack. Any attack. No questions asked. Personally, I think that's pretty damn insane. Uh, just being able to you pick any attack of your opponents. Just, yeah, I'll use it. It's like, oh, well, that's a nice uh, nice EX Pokemon you're setting up on your bench. I'll just use it as attack when you're active. <laughs> just one-shot it. Like, Mega Gengar is power. Seriously. Like, this... I don't, I don't even know what to say. The Psychics have so much support thanks to this Mega Gengar. 
And what's great about the uh, Megas is this card here, uh, Gengar Spirit Link. There should be another one somewhere. Is that it? Yep, there it is. Monetric Spirit Link and Gengar Spirit Link are two new cards which have come out in this set. Which basically is a tool that if you equip it to the EX form, so if I equip this to Gengar EX or equip this to Monetric EX and then Mega Evolve it, unlike normal with Mega Pokemon where your turn ends, it doesn't. Your turn just doesn't end and you just carry on playing. Making kind of a little bit broken, to be honest. Um, I mean, obviously you'd have to get the tools, but uh, I don't know, you could be running a Leaveny deck, have a Leaveny and then just equip the tools from the deck. I don't know, I'm just, just saying. Uh, Spirit Link seem to be things that they're bringing in for all the new Megas, like in the sets to come as well, which I'm pretty happy with because the old Megas, while good cards, like you have to end your turn, it's, they're really not worth running. So uh, they're pretty cool. Let's uh, have a good cards. Bats Compressor is obviously a must have for the Night Marsh deck. Search deck for up to three cards and discard them. So basically, you just triple Foolish Burial from Yu Gi Oh! Just send any three cards from your deck to the grave. Uh, you can use it to get rid of crap in your deck if you want to thin your deck. You can use it to send energies or supporters uh, to the graveyard to get hold of them more easily. It's pretty damn solid card, to be honest. Uh, Dimension Valley is the filter spell I keep talking about. Each Psychic Pokemon's attack uh, cost one colorless less. The only problem with this is if you go against another Psychic deck, an opponent's second deck, then they've got the uh, ability as well. Chance Hammer is now legal again in this pack. Just card a special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's it. Like I was saying, I have no idea why. Uh, what's his name? Zero Sick is a card when this is a card in the same pack. Like, crazy. Uh, Target Whistle is an interesting card. You put a Pokemon from your opponent's discard part onto their bench. Now, I don't think this works against everything, but in decks that have basic Pokemon with a really low HP, I think this card could be really solid, like in Gengar or like Crobat decks. So you bring out a really weak Pokemon, then evolve to Crobat and kill it instantly and get a prize. I mean, it's it's not... I'm not saying this is a good card in general, but I think it has the potential to be a good card. It could be really funny, basically. Um, next up is the Steel Field spell. All Steel Pokemon can't be affected by special conditions. So if you've got Aegislash EX out with a Plasma Cling Clang on the bench and Steel Shelter, it can't be affected by special conditions, it can't be affected by attacks or effects of EX Pokemon, and it can't be affected by attacks of Pokemon with special energies. Good luck getting past that. <laughs> like, seriously. Fire Pokemon, like, you could send out Embor, I guess, if you're running that deck. You could kill it with Embor. Otherwise, you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> Embol and Blastoise are like your only choices, unless you're running that Frelegate to deck. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, steel Shelter is really helpful to the Steel, and obviously it pumps up Heatran to doing 80 damage, which is pretty solid. It's not the best, but you know, it's pretty solid for free energies. Uh, it's alright. Uh, double Colorless got reprinted in this set, which is nice, you know, always want to keep Double Colorless legal. Uh, Mystery Energy, the new special energy for Psychics. Basically, you can only equip to Psychic Pokemon, and all of the, all the Psychic Pokemon it's equipped to has two less retreat cost. Which, pretty much, as far as I'm aware, every Psychic Pokemon except Galgeist in this set has two or less retreat cost anyway, so it just makes everything retreat cost free. Which is pretty awesome. I mean, obviously the Crobat already has retreat cost free, but equipping this to Mega Gengar, it has free retreat cost. It's kind of dumb. Especially considering they can swap out for free with the 6D and Poison attack. Uh, Versus Seeker is finally legal again. It's the first time since Fire Red and Leaf Green. This used to be like my favourite card back in those days when I used to play back then. And I saw it was getting reprinted, and I was like, no, it can't do the same thing. That'd be that'd be broken today with like Ends and Junipers, and oh my god, it does. Basically just add any supporter from your discard part to your hand. So if you're using stuff like Battle Compressor, I like to use Battle Compressor when I've in my like Nightmash deck. First one, I'll obviously send three Lampants. The next one, I tend to send like a, one Lampant, the last one, and like one Joltic and a Lissandre, just so I can get him in the graveyard to add him back with Versus Seeker because I run four Versus Seekers. This card is amazing, like seriously, because it's an item. Obviously, you have no limit to how often you use it. And if you want to put it back in your deck, just add a Shauna back and shuffle it back in. If you've got too many of them, you know, like this card solves a lot of problems. Uh, Lissandra's trump card. Each player shuffles their entire discard pile into their deck. This is really funny as Nightmarch. 
Set up all my night march. I'm going to beat down. Oh, Lissandre's, Lissandre's trump card. They're all back in now. Yay. Uh, if you're about to deck out, it can also save you. Because a lot of people seem to draw a bit too many cards in this game. When I play on uh, TCGO, I can't help but like win because they deck out all the time. I don't know why everyone does it, but they do. Um, so this card's kind of funny. But not really much past that. It's just funny against certain decks. Uh, trick coin. I've talked about this many times. Once during a turn, after you flip any coins from an attack of a Pokemon this card is attached to, you may ignore all effects of those coin flips and begin flipping again. Oh, I am mistaken on this card. It does let you flip coins. Um, wait, we may only use the effects that let you flip coins, including effects from other cards, once during your turn. Right. So you can use effects that, allow you, that flip multiple coins. So you can ignore the effect of all of the coin flips, basically. So you can't like keep some of them. Well, it's still you know a pretty possible item. I also didn't realize it was a tool actually. I don't know what I thought it was, but so it only works when the Pokemon's equipped to. So I mean, you could you could do something cool with it, but I don't know. Uh, Sycamore got reprinted in here. You know, he's always going to get reprinted. Shauna got reprinted in here. She's probably always going to get reprinted. It's fine. Uh, Robo substitute is amazing. Basically, it's a 30 health Pokemon, which isn't much. You know, you can kill it pretty easily. But your opponent doesn't get a prize when it's knocked out. It's like the old school uh, Clefairy Dell and Fossil. You just send it out and stall with it for a turn. They've got to kill it, really. Unless they've got Lissandre or whatever. So it's just going to sit there and troll your opponent, basically. And you can just run four of these in any deck that really needs like time to set up. I think this card's pretty solid for those situations. Uh, roller Skates. I don't personally like it because you have to flip a coin, but in turbo decks I can understand running four of them just for the possibility of getting the coin flip and drawing three cards. Yeah, to be honest, it's not really very good though. The last two cards I want to talk about are Headringer and Jamming Net. Do I think these are good cards? Mm, not really. Um, Headringer, well basically what they both do is they're team player equip cards. So like a Pokemon tool, but you equip it to your opponent. Pokemon EX, so only a Pokemon EX. Um, obviously, that means they can't now equip another tool to their EX because they've already got one equipped. Um, this one means all their attacks cost an extra colorless. So, if it's a psychic Pokemon, it basically counters out the field spell, and if it's not, they have to put an extra energy to do any attack. Uh, Jamming Net uh, makes all their attacks do 20 less damage, and that's basically all they do. So, like, they're good. Like, doing 20 less damage is pretty awesome. You could equip that to Pokemon EX. Say like, um, what's his name? Seismitoad X, whose uh, main attack does 30, so it'll only do 10. That's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. Uh, you could uh, equip it to, um, what's it called? Lucario EX. Uh, his first attack, I can't remember if it does 20 or 30, but you know you can reduce that quite a bit. Um, so I think they have potential to be good. But I don't know if there's any decks out there that have the space that they could just fit these cards in, because why not? Like, you'd have to be running a very specific deck to be using these. Like, maybe something that does extra damage to Pokemon with Pokemon tools or something? I don't really know. But, um, I like the possibilities, at least. But, um, yeah, so that was my review of the Phantom Forces set. Uh, that was a very long video. Very, very, like, way longer than I expected it to be. Uh, but if you enjoyed this, if you now think that you know more about the set, I mean, I guess I could do like a what I think of the set as a whole. To be honest, this is probably the best Pokemon TCG set. Full stop. Just the best set. There are so many good cards and possibilities in this set. It's like insane. There are different decks you can build. There's support for like all types of decks. Unless you want to play grass. I mean, there are some grass supports in here, but they're not very, very good. Uh, you got the Pyroars for the fire, you got the Feraligators, the Luminians for the water, uh, electric decks, I've got Mega Manetric EX, which is insane, like Pachirisu, uh, you got the Crobats and the Wobbuffets, uh, maybe even Chandelure for Psychic, you've obviously got all the Night March Pokemon, you've got all the Steel Pokemon, which make a deck on their own, you can literally build a deck of just Bronzong, Dialga EX, Heatran, Aegislash EX, Klefki. I think that's a pretty solid deck on its own. And if you do need extra Pokemon, hell, why well, not just run a Scavalier and maybe Skarmory, even though it's part of 
trash. Just you could literally build it solidly out of this. You buy some steel energies, get some other supporters. Well, I mean, you could actually run it with just the supporters and items in here, really. I mean, probably best not to, but you know, you've got your steel shelters, you've got reprints of uh, Shauna, your reprints of Sycamore, you've got you know, Versus Seeker to get stuff back. You probably obviously want Lissandre, but pretty much the reprints in the set are amazing. Uh, the new supporters in this set suck, but the old supporters that they've reprinted are solid, so it's still worth getting. Uh, the new cards of each type is good. Depends what deck you're on. If you want a psychic deck, this is a must buy pack. You probably already know that. Uh, if you're playing electric, I would definitely recommend picking this pack up. Uh, Nightmarsh deck, you can build the whole deck out of like one box. Uh, if you want to play the Celebi EX variant that I play, you will have to obviously get Celebi EXs and probably Verizions or whatever. But, um,. It's, you know, well, you could just play the deck without them and just play it as pretty much that. And the next set, there's a field spell that's coming out. That's not for technical field spells in this game. Uh, stadium that's coming out uh, that allows you to use the previous stage evolution so you won't even need Celebi. It would just make the deck a whole bunch cheaper to play, which is awesome. There's a few decent dark cards, a few decent fighting cards, a few decent fairy cards, even a couple of decent dragons, which is pretty cool. Uh, one that would be good in a fairy deck, one that would be good in a dark deck. So all in all, this set is amazing. Uh, if you you know buy a box, I think boxes are like what fifty five quid. You're guaranteed about well, not guaranteed, but you get around five to six ultras in a box. Um, you could easily make your money back if that's what you're worried about. Like a lot of the cards in the set are worth a decent amount of money, like Gengar EXs and full lot Gengar EXs go for like twenty five quid on eBay. <laughs> okay, uh, there are like two here. <laughs> um, but yeah, hundred percent. Definitely recommend this set. Solid set. Solid cards. And um, I might go and try and build that water deck I was talking about with Ferragator. So I hope you have enjoyed this like 50 minute video. I uh, hope you're more knowledgeable about the Phantom Forces and the Pokemon TCG now. Um, if I do this in the future, I'll try and cut it down a bit. Maybe I won't talk about the trash cards. In fact, if, I, if you're hearing me say that and you're like, what are you talking about? I've probably already cut the bit about all the trash cards in this set. Except probably Hunch Crow because I kind of mentioned that. I don't know. We'll, we'll just upload it as it is. It's a 50 minute video, whatever. And then we'll cut him down in the future. So thanks for listening, watching, taking in what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is bye. Bye.